So I've been obsessed with fougeres as of lately. It's probably my favorite genre of fragrances at this time. And you already know I had to add the classic from the 80s, Jacar Noir. So let's go ahead and unbox this and do my first impression now. Hey, what's going on guys? Hunter here and welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, what I do is I make fragrance related content. So if you love fragrances, go and smash the subscribe button down below. But that's right guys, we have one of the classic, huge fan following fragrance in my hands right now is Jacar Noir by Guy LaRoche. I think that's how you pronounce it. Now, honestly guys, this may be, this may be a shocker, but I've never actually either owned a bottle of Jacar Noir or even smelled it unless when we do my first impression and it does remind me of something because I have heard a lot of people used to wear this and still do to this day. So maybe I passed by someone that actually had this on and it may kind of trigger my memory of it, but never owned the bottle and never smelled it. And I don't know anybody that actually wore this fragrance like my father or any like family members, nothing like that. So pretty much going into this fragrance completely blind, uh, not knowing what to really expect besides it's going to be obviously like a classic fougere style fragrance, which like I said in the intro, I am in love with fougere barbershops, kind of aromatics, Shepra fragrances. So I'm really looking forward to this one, but let's look at this packaging. Um, it is kind of like a basic cardboard box, kind of cheap, flimsy, but it's obviously a cheap fragrance. As you see, I actually did pick this up at TJ Maxx. I got an additional 20% off the $31.99, so I got it for around 25 bucks for a 100 ml bottle, which I think is actually a very good price. It is, of course, an eau de Tilly concentration, and I'm assuming this is gonna be like an 80s powerhouse fragrance, but let's go ahead and take off the cellophane here and crack open this box. So here is the box without the cellophane. It actually does kind of have like a nice kind of pattern, uh, like 3D textured around the whole thing. On the bottom is you're gonna be your batch code to authenticate your product and see when your product was actually produced. Now this is of course going to be a new formulation of Jacquard Noir. I'm assuming this is probably like a 21, 22 batch. So I believe they are actually still making these in production. So let's go ahead and take out this bottle. I'm really curious on how this bottle is actually going to fill because from look, looking at your Carte Noir pictures and stuff, it seems like a very cheap bottle. So let's see. Oh, here it is. The iconic Jacquard Noir bottle, guys. Okay, so yeah, it is coming across pretty cheap, but it does look kind of like nice, masculine, and sleek. You have the Jacquard Noir logo on the top of the cap, which is a nice detail. Um, nothing on the bottom actually, which is kind of odd. Usually you have like a sticker with some information in your batch code, but no sticker. Like I said, this is a 100 ml bottle. Your batch code's actually on the back, right above the size of your bottle, if you can catch that right there. So it is actually printed on, which is cool. Whoa, guys, all right. So you don't have a collar around the atomizer. It does look very, very unfinished. The cap is obviously made out of the plastic and extremely lightweight, but what are you gonna expect? It's not an expensive fragrance, like I said, so can't really complain that much, but let's go ahead and spray this. I'm gonna actually spray it on my skin rather than a test strip because I'm really curious about this fragrance. I've always heard a lot of people talk about this. There's a bunch of memes with Jacquard Noir. And I actually remember a Family Guy episode talking about Jacquard Noir as well, kind of making fun of it and stuff. So I think it's kind of funny, but a lot of people say that this is a must have in any man's collection. And I'm glad that to finally have it in my collection regardless, just because it's obviously a classic timeless, well, maybe timeless, we'll see on that, but it may be out outdated as well. But let's go ahead and test out the atomizer of Jacquard Noir. Nothing. Get two nice sprays. That sprayer actually sprays a lot of juice. It's not pressurized, of course, but it does spray a lot on your onto your skin, which is always good. So. Ooh, guys, I'm picking it up in the air. All right, so I'm assuming this is gonna be a beast of a fragrance. Wow, very, very green and aromatic. It's right off the bat in that opening. Wow, guys, I'm really digging that opening of Jacquard Noir. I'm also getting a lemon, very citrusy, very aromatic, earthy green opening with this. Also getting a very kind of soapy, cream-like lavender in the opening, which of course makes it a Fougere barbershop style fragrance. Heavy on lavender, 
Wow, the way the lavender is blended in this opening alongside the lemon, citrus, and maybe bergamot is really, really well done. I'm actually kind of surprised. And that lemon, it's a very dominant lemon note. It almost kind of smells like a lemon kind of candies. That's what it, how it's coming across to me. There's nothing really dirty or dark or kind of like old school about that opening by any means. I'm assuming it's gonna obviously change quite a bit once you start getting like the middle notes and the dry down of the fragrance, but that initial opening, I'm very, very impressed how well it's blended together with the lavender and stuff. Very well done. Very, very masculine. I'm actually gonna let that dry down for a couple minutes. Um, now, as far as how, how it's coming across on the initial opening, guys, it's coming across obviously barbershop, soapy, kind of like shaven foam. That's how it's coming across to me. Um, very, very masculine upon first impression, which you would of course expect from a 80s masculine fragrance. This fragrance actually just hit its 40 year anniversary this year. We're in 2022 if you're watching this now. And this fragrance was launched in 1982. So 40 years, Jacquard Noir has been around. So happy birthday to Jacquard Noir for being 40 years old. I was honestly expecting the opening to be kind of like more dated and old school and kind of more sheeper like but man, this is just coming across not actually dated whatsoever. This may actually be a timeless classic masculine fragrance. And I can see why there's a, such a huge cult following behind Jacquard Noir even to this date. Guys absolutely love this stuff. I'm not sure if the, like it's crowd pleasing, even though the opening doesn't seem like it's that daring and won't really like um, kind of persuade people away from you. I think the opening of this stuff is very, very nice. It's not really offensive or anything like that. I'm assuming, like I said, the dry down of this stuff, it's probably gonna change a lot. Cause I can tell kind of like direction this fragrance is gonna go into. So yeah, very masculine. Um, if I were to say like what age groups would best suit Jacquard Noir, I would have to go with probably anyone in like their 20s and up. I was expecting this to be much more mature, but honestly guys, from, to my nose, this is not coming across as very mature at all, at least on the opening of it. So I think it would definitely suit anyone in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and up perfectly. It doesn't really come across like a juvenile fragrance, so to say. So I don't really see like a teenager really enjoying this one. But at the end of the day, it's not very like um like a grandpa smelling or nothing like that. I actually like this one quite a bit. All right, so it's been a few minutes now. It is starting to dry down a little bit. The lemon, the bergamot, the citruses and stuff like that starting to fade away a, a tiny bit now. Um, and more of the earthy oak moss, maybe some patchouli, maybe some fir. I'm also getting some kind of like pine. So it's a very, very earthy, very, very green. Obviously it's gonna be a um, fougere, kind of maybe a sheepra, maybe a little bit woody as well. It's funny because this is actually getting compared to uh, Dior Sauvage Elixir, which just launched last year. Obviously um, that is a flanker of the original Sauvage. And I'm not getting any similarities to Sauvage Elixir to Jacquard Noir. So I'm not sure where that's coming from unless this fragrance is very, very complex and it completely changes and they dry down. But as of right now, I'm not getting any similarities to Sauvage Elixir and I do own a bottle and I'm very familiar with that fragrance. I have worn it quite a bit. So yeah, not similar at all as of now. And I thought that maybe if, um, if I smell this, I would remember smelling it maybe walking around the streets or going over someone's house or maybe a family member that used to wear this one but no i'm not getting any memories associated with jacquard noir at all guys i do this does not bring back no memories whatsoever so it is starting to dry down to be much more masculine much more dark i'm starting to get some kind of like dark leather in this fragrance alongside maybe some vetiver and some kind of warming aspect. So yeah, it is coming across much more masculine compared to the opening, which had that very soapy kind of shaven foam lavender alongside like lemon and bergamot. It's starting to really dry down to become much more masculine, kind of like a fragrance that would just put hair on your chest, guys. That's how this is coming across. Now I can definitely see where the memes and stuff like that is, is coming from. Um, I do remember a meme saying something like, where were the masks during the 1980s outbreak of Jacquard Noir? And I thought that was hilarious because obviously we went through COVID-19 and we're a mask and stuff like that. So I guess Jacquard Noir was pretty much filling up the streets with all the guys wearing it back in like the 80s and 90s. 
So that is kind of hilarious. It is coming across pretty strong, I must say. It is projecting off my skin very, very well, especially for this new formulation. I actually want to look up this batch code and see if this is actually either like a 2022 batch, 21, 2019. Just out of curiosity, I'm not sure obviously when reformulations happen, but I'm sure there obviously had to have been since it's 40 years old now. I can only imagine what the original Jacquard Noir smelled like. It was probably a, a, a beast with a bunch of naturals and, and stuff like that, maybe a little bit more animalic or musky. But yeah, usually from my experience with uh, old school fragrances, even like the, the newer reformulated versions do smell very, very similar to the originals like Polo Green smells very similar to the original with the new formulation. So I'm sure this one does smell the same as the original, maybe slightly different, but it has to have obviously the same Jacquard Noir DNA in it. As far as seasons go, um, to be honest with you guys, as of now, I would say this one is very versatile, signature scent worthy, 100%. You can wear this one in the fall, winter, spring, and summer because you do have that nice soapy, citrusy opening, and it dries down to be a little bit more woody, earthy, and kind of warming as well. Maybe some kind of like resinous qualities in this fragrance. So I think it would honestly work all year round, as far as occasions go for this one, I honestly think it would also be versatile. You can wear this one dressed up. You can wear this one casually when you're dressed down. If you're going to parties, if you're just going on um, running errands, if you're going on a date, if you're going to a wedding, if you're going to church, I think this will work for all of those occasions as well. This is just coming across like a very, very versatile masculine fragrance. Now I can definitely see why this is very popular when it came out in the 80s because it just works for, for everything pretty much. I do think this fragrance does get a lot of hate. I don't know if it's because it's just been overdone or what or they just hate the scent profile in general but to me guys I actually do not hate this fragrance. I actually quite enjoy it. It is kind of a different fougere fragrance. Kind of unique in my collection at least. I'm sure this fragrance has been cloned many, many times because of obviously the popularity behind it, just how like Creed Aventus has been cloned many, many times since 2010 because it's one of the most popular fragrances and so is this. So I'm sure it's not unique anymore, but I honestly can't say I have any fragrances in my collection currently that smells like Jacquard Noir, so it's not redundant to me. And I'm actually very excited to actually get full wearings out of this and see how it develops and wears throughout the day. And also a fun fact, the perfumer behind Jacquard Noir actually created Yves Saint Laurent's Loam and La Nuit de Loam. So I think that is actually pretty cool. I'm a huge fan of La Nuit de Loam. Obviously that's a very sexy, spicy, date night cardamom fragrance. So yeah, he has a pretty decent resume making Jacquard Noir and some of the high level masculine Yves Saint Laurent fragrances as well. So that is pretty awesome to know. Now for 25 bucks at the price I got this, I think it's an absolute steal, 100% worth that price. So I'm satisfied with my purchase. I actually like Jacquard Noir and I cannot wait to give it some more full wearings. But that's gonna wrap up my unboxing and first impression of the 80s classic. Let me know down below if you actually enjoy Jacquard Noir, if you own it, if you have any memories with it. I'm definitely curious. Also, if you actually own either a vintage batch and own a new formulation, let us all know how they compare as well. I love hearing those comments from you guys, but that's gonna do it for me. Leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch all you guys in the next upload. Take care, everybody.